How does alcohol actually affect your brain? And did you encounter that one relative this weekend that you think you might be able to help? Joe Mites is in the house. It's Recovery Monday. Welcome to The View from a Pew, a conversation among Christians who are out to grow their faith by asking the simple questions, the tough questions, and the stuff you really wish your pastor would talk about. Come on now, let's reason together. It's your voice we want to hear. The phone lines are open, so join the conversation. Call 855-244-0077. That's 855-244-0077. Now, here's your host. J. Michael McCoy. Good afternoon. Four minutes after the hour on this Monday. It's Recovery Monday. Joe Mites is in the house from St. Gregory's Recovery Center. And exactly how does alcohol impact the body? Not just the mind, but the body. Bob Montserrat, our cat in the hat watching the chat, is also a forensics scientist. And he's going to help us today understand that a little bit more. Army Brad is in the house along with Father Tattoo. Joe, uh, tell us the worst thing that alcohol does to the body biologically. Well, the, the, yeah, it's kind of a loaded question, but uh, for one, the, the biggest real manifestation that we see that has a big impact on your physical health is the damage to the liver. Okay. And that's always the biggest one. You hear uh, a lot of people end up with cirrhosis of the liver and uh, essentially, it really just uh, it, it can have devastating effects that way. T t uh, tell me what cirrhosis of the liver is. You're going to have to have to ask a Robert. Doctor what is cirrhosis of the liver? Well, it is the the liver itself. It's a disease where the liver is diseased and it stops functioning. And um, you know, if you look at it in an autopsy, which you haven't gotten a scene yet, but you know, it goes from a, a deep dark, like reddish, to an orange color okay and it's just it's just a breakdown of the tissue so it cannot function and it dies and it's disease that can continue to it continues to break down the liver as you continue to you know live the way you're living and eventually you can live uh, you know with a small amount of your liver but eventually it takes it over and then when it, it, the liver is used to, to uh, clean up the toxins within your body is there any um uh let's let's talk about cheating here are there any minerals vitamins over-the-counter drugs, uh, prescription drugs that one can take that revitalizes the liver? If you eat liver, does it once it's fix the dead, liver? Once it's dead, I don't see how you can. It's just, it's no, I know not dead dead, but if, if there's somebody out there who's drinking and he doesn't want it to impact his liver. Well, I would, oh, well. Doesn't want to die. Yeah. I don't know if you can uh, nutritionally, I suppose you can nutritionally support yourself. But uh, I don't know how effective that is. I don't. I'm not sure. I'd have to look up studies to see if okay. you can, you know, take vitamin D or vitamin C or whatever, and that would protect your liver from your overconsumption of alcohol. Yeah, I'm not sure about the regenerative qualities either. But I do know, um, you know, I've had a lot of people that I've worked with who they've gotten to the point where it was so bad and their liver was so close to absolute failure. Um, it was a lifelong issue maintaining their health afterwards, mm -hmm. uh, after treatment and abstaining from alcohol. Um, it, it really does get to a point where uh, that's that's one of the most devastating things that I've seen, especially because uh, of exactly that. Um, at least in my experience, it hasn't been uh, something that's really going to heal back to where it was. You're not going to get a whole lot of functionality back. And it's one of those things that's always the worst thing to see with recovery is, you know, you have people who, you know, really get to that breakthrough and they're ready for sobriety and they're ready to go live their new life. They've got the tools, they've got the things that they need and they've got everything going for them. And they've still got these constant reminders of what they had done. And that's a huge one. It's, yeah. it's every day just knowing this is what I had done. What are the symptoms of a dying or sick liver? Well, a lot of it, real jaundice, uh, you know, a yellowing of the skin, uh, it's actually a little frightening, uh, you know, uh, 
you you can see just somebody looks genuinely sick when that liver gets to a point of that low level of functionality. And, yeah, because uh, it's not, a little alarming, frankly. You're not clearing out the toxins. That's what is there. You know, every time you take a breath and air freshener, which is toxic to the body, well, you put down lawn furniture, lawn furniture, lawn uh, furniture polish and. Uh, pesticides and herbicides and all that, your liver has to clean that out as you're absorbing that and breathing that into your body. So it, it cleans up your body and takes the toxins out. If it doesn't do it anymore, then you're poisoning it. You're gonna that you're gonna die from poisons that your body can't get rid of. Now what's the difference between a liver function and kidneys? Well kidneys is is uh, of course used to get rid of uh, liquid. That's where you know urine comes from in the kidneys and then it and it empties into your bladder. So it's another way of purifying and purging your system, uh, and it does it through getting rid of that uh, toxic substances that get into your uh, into the fluid in your body, that it flushes the fluid out. Now, Brad, the other day you and I were working out, and you made the comment that by working out and getting the heart rate up and sweating. And sweating. The sweat is pushing out poisons. And, and That's another out. Yep. Th that helps your liver and that helps your well, any, kidneys? It's not necessarily helping your liver. It's just another way your body gets rid of toxins in the body. It's taking those toxins out of your system that then your liver and kidney doesn't have to push them oh. out. So it, Army it, Brad in the house today along with Bob Monster at the Cat in the Hat who uh, in his real-time job every day is a forensic scientist with the state and Joe Mines from uh, St. Gregory's Recovery Center. Talk to me about what it does. I guess this question goes back to Bob again. What what does it do to the veins and the arteries? Well, veins and arteries are a little different. Uh, that's how your blood flows through your body. You know, the arteries is where it's being pumped at high pressure throughout your bodies and then uh, goes to your lungs where the blood is oxygenated and deoxygenated and the veins is, where, is the process of uh, uh, returning that uh, deoxygenated blood, you know, back through your body into your lungs to get oxygenated to do the whole cycle of re re refreshing your body. Also, it's important to get to your brain. So the veins and arteries are, are the transportation mode of getting blood throughout your system. And the capillaries, or capillaries, depending on if you were, you know, if Maddie was here, it's capillary. Mm -hmm. uh, then uh, those are very, very tiny blood vessels that are in every cell within your body. It has to transport all the oxygenated blood to every single cell of your body so you can live. And the brain, of course, is very important. It gets most of the oxygenated blood, of course, first goes to your brain. Okay. Because you need that. So if somebody's without oxygen to the brain for like three or four minutes, usually they're going to be brain dead because you need to have that fresh blood getting in there. So the alcohol is absorbed into the stomach and then from the stomach into the, the circulatory system. Through the small intestines. And then the circulatory system takes it to the brain. That's correct. Via the heart that pumps. It's constantly pumping that blood and circulating throughout your body. See, it has to oxygenate and, and your blood, and then it has to get rid of the carbon dioxide. So it's a process that's constantly going as you breathe in and out. You know, you're breathing in the oxygen, you're breathing out carbon dioxide, and so that's a constant uh, process. When you drink alcohol, the alcohol does not need to be digested. It's already in its smallest form. So it goes directly into your blood system, and most of it goes in via your small intestines. Once it's in there, and it's quickly circulated to every part of your body, and once it gets into your brain, it causes that central nervous system depressing effect. And that is what we call you know, getting drunk or getting high when it depresses the, the, you know, the brain cells. And so the only way that alcohol will get out of your system is for it to be metabolized by your liver. So your liver will also, because it sees it as a toxic substance, that's how your body sees alcohol or any other drugs. And so your liver has to do that metabolism or oxidation and get rid of that alcohol. So it breaks it down. It breaks down the alcohol to uh, carbon dioxide. Um, it breaks it down to water and, and so forth to get it out of your body. And so uh, and then you urinate it out or you sweat it out. You know, or you can breathe out a, sm a small portion of alcohol, and that's how come we have breath testers. Mm. Because alcohol actually comes in your lungs, and when somebody's talking to you, you can smell the alcohol on their breath. And so what you're smelling is pure alcohol because it's coming directly out of your lungs from your blood system, and you're getting, and you're, so you're smelling pure alcohol. It was so funny that you say that. We were at my wife's Christmas party last night. And now remember, I haven't really been around people consuming alcohol for almost three years. Uh, 
I mean, like not at all, hardly. Maybe some wine at a small group or something. And I'm standing next to this guy, and he's obviously drinking scotch, and he's talking to me. And it was it was kind of weird because I it was one of the first times I think I smelled scotch in three years. Now I was never a scotch drinker. I didn't drink caramel liquors, but it reminded me about how uh, uh, active that um, sense can be when it comes to alcohol. Where before I didn't notice it at all. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and if a person was drinking vodka, there would be no odor of the adulterants that it, that they put into that right. mix. And so what you'd be smelling is just pure alcohol coming out of their breath. Now, what about um, what's the difference between a nine dollar bottle of li- uh, alcohol, uh, let's say uh, gin, vodka, I don't care, just pick one, and a fifty dollar bottle for the same amount? What what has happened to make that better besides marketing? Well, the alcohol isn't better. It's just the uh, the flavoring that they have in there that you happen to like the taste of it. But ethyl alcohol is ethyl alcohol, whether it's in a cheap bottle or an expensive bottle. All right, so the cheap bottle isn't any harder on your liver than the $50 bottle, the $10 bottle. It'll be just as hard. Just as hard. Yeah, you just have to look to see what the alcohol content is. So the $50 bottle is is not... So so the myth out there, if a guy drinks absolute compared to Hawkeye, he's not doing his body any good. All he's doing is getting a refined taste. Or he may be getting a higher concentration of alcohol. Oh. I mean, if you if you're you know drinking uh, ninety proof, you know that's gonna be that's forty five percent alcohol. Yeah. And so, or if you have two hundred proof, then that's a hundred percent, you know, alcohol. So it depends on the alcohol concentration. Beer usually is three to four percent. Yeah. Uh, whiskeys will vary eighty percent, you know, ninety percent, and then you have all these different wines, and they're going to be around twelve percent or somewhere around there. And you at home may be wondering why here on webcast1live.com on Recovery Monday, we talk about these things. We talk about these things to inform you and educate you for that time, and maybe you already know who it is, but you don't know when it will be, for that time that someone comes to you and says, man, I, I, I don't know, maybe, maybe I drink too much. Because the answer back to that person is not, yeah, you think so? The answer might be what, Joe? Sometimes it's, yeah, you think so? It is, okay. Sure. <laughs> Sarcastically. <laughs> no, not necessarily. It's, uh, uh, you know, when, when somebody comes to you and says that, that, that really kind of tells you that they're already kind of moving from that uh, pre-contemplation to a contemplative phase of, of really cogniting on their circumstance. So they get to this point. They, if they're going to say that to you, they've thought about it. Good and long before they've said it. Now, what's the difference between that statement, gee, I wonder if I drink too much, to I don't think I drink too much? Yeah, a big one. And and it's really a lot of our recovery program at St. Gregory's is based on the stages of change. And it really just kind of identifies which period you are through a generalized change process. We all go through a a basically similar process in, in any change. And it's starts out at pre-contemplation. Uh, it's, it's before you've really started to contemplate, should I make this change or not? Um, and that, that's really the difference, is the difference between being in a pre-contemplation phase and a contemplation phase. Um, when somebody comes and says, you know, I, I really don't think that I do, um, you got to get a little deeper to really understand exactly where they're at. They may be just telling you that to avoid consequence. And that's it kind of comes back to denial as well. A lot of people have this misconception on denial that denial is just, uh, nope, you're denying it because you don't know that there's a problem. Uh, it's pretty rare where somebody really doesn't know that there's a problem. Uh, once it becomes a problem, you pretty well know. You have those little uh, fleeting moments a lot of times at yeah. the very least where you know there's a problem. Well, and I would think, I, I think I, 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 I don't disagree with you because you're an expert, but I think a little differently on that. If I had somebody in my life who came to me and said, you know, I don't know if I drink too much. What I hear them doing is questioning whether they drink too much. Mm -hmm. And they don't want to ask the question because they don't want to hear the answer. So they make the statement. But at the end of that statement, in parentheses, there's a question. Yeah, well, if they originate to you just out of the blue, yeah, I don't know if I drink too much. That means they think they drink too much and they're yeah. trying to throw it out into the universe of ideas. It's uh, somebody says, oh, no, no, you're good. Yeah. <laughs> it's Recovery Monday. Joe Mites from St. Gregory's is in the house 17 minutes past the hour when we came back. Uh, other things that you can say and do to approach that family member, and we do this kind of because we're around the holidays, that you believe or other people in the family may believe has a 
drug or alcohol problem. That's next live on Recovery Monday from St. Gregory's and KTIA, Iowa. Leach, owner and general manager of Service Legends. Oh, I brought uh, along a couple of the uh, home comfort heroes. <laughs> Hi, I'm Tammy Wells. I am Nick Wondershot. I'm administrative manager. I'm the senior technician. From Service Legends. It seems like every good thing, when you feel it to the bone that it's good, there's a lot of hard work put behind it. You just, I, I don't think that you can fake it and have it turn out good. You know, if we seem like, okay, that's just weird, it's just a furnace, why would you believe so deeply in a furnace? It's not just that, you know, we want to show the world that you can have good service. Yeah, I mean, it's gotta be, it's your home. You know, it's, it's built into our daily trainings, it's built into our culture, um, that we're gonna do whatever it takes to have each client say they love us, period. That's why we spend all the hours in the training that we do, and if we guarantee it's gonna be a good experience for you, or else it's free, what type of work do you think we're gonna do? <laughs> there is a guarantee. Temperature selection guarantee, fixed rider it's free guarantee, comfort guarantee, best value guarantee, all of these guarantees hold us accountable to ensuring that we exceed your expectations. And if for whatever reason we fail and we can't make it right, we guarantee all of those guarantees with a 100% money back guarantee. I mean, if you don't think that your technician can fix it right, are you gonna say that to a client? No. <laughs> You don't have to worry about having a technician come to your house. We drug test, background check all of our team members. We put safe people in your home. Each and every one of our service techs, 400 hours a year in training. You tell it the minute they walk in the door. They know what they're doing, they've done their homework, and they actually truly care about what you want. Because at the end of the day, you're the person that makes sure I have a job. They're gonna be listening. They're gonna wanna know what your challenges are. Then they're gonna come and give you options and, and you get to choose. If I'm there to help and I make it easy and painless, I did my job right that day. Well, when it comes to your comfort, safety, and your family. You know, you don't necessarily go buy the most expensive, but you get the most bang for your buck. Oh, it's worth it, because there's a lot of people that will find a way to get it to work right now, and then leave, and then come back, charge you again, and, and the cycle just repeats itself. So when I'm out there looking at the furnace, I want to find why it failed today. How can we change the part today with something that you're not going to have to worry about? Is it worth changing the part today? I mean, you can put a lot of money into a furnace. I can fix parts all day. There's good job security in that for me but is it the right thing for you? I get a lot of the phone calls of after the technicians are there. They're just in awe. They're like, wow, you guys are great. I mean, I don't even know what to say. You guys are great. Everything you did is perfect. It's great. <laughs> Keep going though. I like this. <laughs> just give us a try. I'm gonna take all the risk. I've got the time to make this right. I've got the support to make it right. Just check us out. And if you don't see the value in what we do. I mean, fixed right or it's free or 100% money back. Enough said. ever been told you're not a good enough Christian? Well, we have too. Join the conversation. Call 855-244-0077. Now here's your host, president of the Not A Good Enough Christian Club, J. Michael McCoy. 21 minutes after the hour, Joe Mites is in the house from St. Gregory's. We're talking about the function and dysfunctionality that alcohol causes in your brain. We do this on Monday. Why do we talk about such depressing things? Because we're trying to help you. And, and I'm, I'm sorry if it's not. Uh, I, I'm, I, I get emails from you saying that you love this program on Tuesday. You love this program on Wednesday. You even love it when Tom Coates comes on. You love Maddie Smith. You love it when we unpack Bible verses and we argue social issues. But you just can't get into Mondays. It doesn't relate to your life. I understand. I do. And, and I'm sorry. Um, we do this because... We want to help you not be a codependent. We want to help you not be an enabler. Week after week after week, we talk to you about the impacts that over-the-counter drugs, prescription drugs, illegal drugs, alcohol, and other hurts, habits, and hang-ups has on the loved ones in your family. I don't really think I'm talking to you. Now, the statistics say 10% of all Americans are alcoholic. You say that's much, much higher. Substance dependent on alcohol or something. Something. Um, 
Uh, and, and I'll never forget the day that uh, my pastor, we've got 2,800 people in the sanctuary, and he looked out and he said, 10% of you people are alcoholics. And, of course, I knew he was talking to me, but I didn't know he was talking to another 10% of them out there. And it doesn't matter whether you're in church, whether you're in a bar. It's probably a little higher in a bar and a little lower in a church, but not by enough to make a difference. Nope. Uh, Bob Monster at the Cat in the Hat. We love having Bob on all of our shows. He knows the Bible. He loves the Lord. But in his day job, he's a forensic scientist for the state of Iowa. In fact, if you were to Google Bob Monster at Iowa, you would see case after case after case after case after case after case. He's been called as an expert witness. Uh, Army Brad is in the house. We have uh, Father Tattoo uh, who is here. We ask that if you have a prayer list, if you have a prayer request sheet, or maybe you just keep them in your head, pray for Stu Epperson, Chris Roloff, and everybody at the Truth Network. This network is growing. This network is expanding. It's taking chances, it's taking risks, and it needs our prayers for all the good things that are happening. So I just ask, and name them, Chris, Stu, and the Truth Network, and I would appreciate that. All right, somebody made an interesting comment as soon as the mic shut off, but I want to I talk about it for a minute. Let's talk, we're, we're talking basically about things that you ingest that have a, 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 an impact on the body both negatively and positively. Um, there's an old saying that a glass of wine a day is healthy for you. Bob, is that because of the grape juice or because of the alcohol? Well, alcohol to a certain extent could be good. It's in small levels. It's not bad. Uh, but, but wine itself, for instance, has, is made of grapes. And there's resveratrol, which is a component within the grape seed and or the skin and it's very very healthy for you okay and so uh you know it's good for the heart and other parts of your body and like they did some studies in france because they drink a lot of wine and they tend to have a lower rate they look at the entire population of heart disease and so forth and they've narrowed it down to that resveratrol which is a wow. major component there and so yeah so the thing is wine could be good if used in moderation but the problem we're talking here is people don't deal with it right. in moderation. It's not it's not well, the, the individual product, it's the abuse of it. What is Bob, what is too much in alcohol? I mean, I know we have the legal point zero eight. Right. And you know, I kinda laugh at that because fifteen years ago it was point one six. I mean that just changes the right. more uh mad mothers against drunk drivers get more money to push the legislature to push it down okay when you say too much it all depends on how you're dealing for instance i'm a non-drinker okay and so if i have uh two glasses of wine i can't drive okay my level will be super low maybe 0.02 but i can't function you're impaired i'm impaired okay but there are people that are uh, so this that's called tolerance to alcohol okay so the more experienced the drinker is the more alcohol they can consume and not show the outward signs that uh, some people would notice. All right. Now, we talked about um, that you can smell a lot of alcohols on the breath. And, Joe, you made up the fact you, you made the fact that you're an, a garlic fiend. All right. <laughs> and garlic is very good for you, right? Yeah. It's an, it's a, it, it's a, it takes out toxins. It's a natural. It's an herb, yes. Okay. But it's one of the most powerful. Yes, it's very powerful. It's good for reducing blood pressure. It's good as a cleansing. It's also good to thin out your blood some. All right. So, but the problem is, if you take alcohol or take, if you take garlic pills or you eat a lot of garlic, you smell funny because it doesn't just come out of your breath. It has a tendency to get into the pores. Well, actually, I think garlic makes you, you know, once you have a, take enough of it, it starts to make you smell good. Seriously? Yeah. Really? Mm-hmm. I can yeah. tell you this, boy, there's nothing makes my wife more attractive than after a great big ribeye just lathered in garlic. See? Well, I'm that's all proof about. right there. <laughs> well, I, I, I like, I like. The to, steak lathered in garlic. Yeah. Not my wife. Yeah, I, I figured that out. <laughs> Although I did have this image of your wife laying across a big piece of prime rib. Um, I like to this roast This conversation garlic. is going downhill very quickly. <laughs> Have you ever met his wife? <laughs> no, but I just, I don't know that I need to think about this. <laughs> I like to take four or five 
garlic balls. Is that what they're called? Garlic balls. cloves. Well, no, the ball. The individual things are the cloves, right? Well, I was saying bulb. Bulb. All right. I like to take four or five of those garlic bulbs, roast them really good, and then put them in a baggie, and those are snacks. Yeah. Take off one of those cloves That's and eat that. Excellent. It's good be- for you. It's better than even just taking the tablets. Okay. It's way better. All right. Mm-hmm. So good. Keep it up. And that has a positive impact on high blood pressure. Yes. And what else? Well, it tends to uh, cleanse your system, too. It's, it helps in the removal of toxins. Okay. The garlic itself. Have you ever heard of a natural herb called... Oh, I'll think of it. I haven't heard of that one. No, no I know you haven't. haven't heard of it um, I think that's in Centrum. Milkweed. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Milkweed. It's, it's supposed to... Or milk thistle. Milk thistle, thank yeah, you. It's supposed to be cleansing for your liver. Okay. It's supposed to be, you say. Well, that's what they say, and there's some studies that say that. Okay. All right. Is there anything else, guys, that, like, for instance, you've got somebody and they've gone through alcohol treatment at St. Gregory's, and you're never good to go, quote, unquote, after you've completed recovery. And, 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 and you know, those of you that are listening that are not in any way, shape, or form alcoholics or drug abusers or drug addicts or anything like that, what I'm about to say to you might be a, a little offensive, and I'll ask you up front uh, and a- ask you to understand, and I'll apologize if it seems I'm talking down to you a little bit. Can I say that, please? Understand that when someone has been sober for... Lee, owner and general manager of Service Legends. Oh, I brought uh, along a couple of the uh, home comfort heroes. You know, you get what you pay for around Well, here. you know. <laughs> um, when I can't some, even explain that one. I don't know where that happened. When someone has been sober for 30 days, 90 days, one year, three years, that battle is not over. And, and as a non-alcoholic, as a non-drug person, you might sit back and think that, um, well, now that he's gotten, you know, what's, what's the usual? 45 days, it's out of your system, and you kind of lose that urge to drink and stuff like that. Now I expect him or her to remain sober because they, they shouldn't have a problem with it anymore. They've kicked that battle. What do you say in family counseling when someone says something like that? Way to go. Meaning what? Well, I think this is where we differ on our viewpoints. Okay. Um, you mean you and me? That's right. Um, well, you and I, and also um, the modalities by which St. Gregory's approaches addiction and what is the typical paradigm of recovery. Um, we're really looking at this from a completely different aspect altogether in that alcohol or other drugs fill a need. Um, the problem isn't the alcohol or other drugs. Um it's what's bringing you there. Right. It's between your ears. Now, there's also ramifications that are biophysical in nature, um, but uh, we absolutely say we do expect you to be sober. Really? Uh, we absolutely say, okay, let's, let's take a look at life and, and be gone. Go okay. live. Uh, do the things that you were purposed to do. Um, now, personally, I feel that being too intensive on the notion of uh, this idea of in recovery, never recovered. Um, In recovery, never recovered, okay? mm -hmm. Healing, never healed. Right. Um, When it comes to substance abuse, I don't subscribe to that theory. Okay. Um, uh, I think that's the whole point of treatment, Um, especially understanding that most people at some time in their lives can be diagnosed with a substance dependence condition. Um, Most people don't go to treatment. Most people get a job or get married or have a baby. Yeah, get responsibilities. It doesn't allow them to jack around. That's right. Um, So why look at it that way for them and not for the person that ended up going through a treatment program? So it's the philosophy at St. Gregory's, and I don't want to put words in your mouth, Mm -hmm. that once sober, always sober. And that the, there is no longer a, a psychological battle because you've whipped those demons. Yeah, you may not have whipped those demons, but to us, that's got nothing to do with holding the expectation of someone to be sober. 
Okay. Um, so it's the, an expectation. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Um, you know, uh, expectation like uh, I expect you to take care of you uh, biologically and, and in the bathroom. I expect you to uh, hold a job. I expect you to provide for your family. Yes. Wow. Yes. Okay, Joe, I have a question for you then. Because I know in my college years, um, if somebody looked at my drinking habits in that environment, um, they weren't good. Mm-hmm. And But I got out of that environment, and I've, I've never been in any kind of treatment. It really didn't af- – well, maybe it did affect my grades, but not to the point that it stopped me from, from completing that part of that chapter in my life. Mm-hmm. But today I can go and have a beer or not. It's not like if I have one, there's no way that I would ever go back to drinking the way I did in those years. Yeah, you just don't consider it. But I, I at least from what I've heard, because I'm not one of those the, the people that has had a, an actual issue with that. I think if they went back and had another or had one beer, then they would their just psyche would cause them to continue to drink. Or maybe I'm wrong, and, and that's just something that I've always heard and, and, and bought that as being true. Well, we're talking about two different things. We're talking about moderation and abstinence. Right. Um, you know, and yes, uh, there is an affinity that your body will develop for a substance, uh, such as alcohol. You smelled scotch on a guy's breath uh, at a get-together. Um, did it kind of bring back at least some images in your mind about the, the past, all of those types of things? Well, it, 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 first of all, I hadn't smelled liquor on somebody's breath for probably three years. Yeah. Smelled wine, but not liquor. But the, w- w- here's what I thought was really cool, and I was going to share this with you personally, but I'll just share it with you live. I didn't like the smell. Mm-hmm. I didn't like the smell of scotch before. I don't like it now. And that kind of made me feel good. Exactly. You know? Because I didn't go, oh... It was the same reaction I used to have. Oh, yuck, that stuff stinks. All right, Joe Mike from St. Gregory's in the house. Bob Montserrat, Army Brad, uh, Father Tattoo. We're, we're coming back with more things that you can find out about the people in your life that are hurting. I'm a broker owner of Remax Real Estate Concepts in Des Moines, Iowa. Give us a call if you're looking at buying or selling a home, or if you're having trouble on your mortgage payments or looking to purchase foreclosures, we have the agents to help you, experienced, outstanding agents. Our office number is 515-276-2872. Or if you'd like to look at homes, go to our website, homeconnectusa.com. Get away from us, you mean old credit card. We don't have any more money. We're in trouble now. Save us! Somebody save us! Somebody help! Help! Save us! Hi, I'm Tom Coach from Consumer Credit of Des Moines. If your credit card's a little too animated, give us a call. Hooray! We're saved! Consumer Credit! You're our hero! Pretending that life is perfect. If what they see isn't how you feel, God knows and he understands. Chat now with someone who cares at groundwire.net. Drug and alcohol addiction slowly steals a person's identity, tearing away pieces of their life little by little until one day it seems like the hope of a happy future is gone and there's no chance of getting it back. Here at St. Gregory Retreat Centers, we can assure you that there is hope. Our unique approach to recovery begins with the understanding that the dysfunction and damage caused by addiction can be overcome, not just dealt with. Don't let another day go by. Call St. Gregory today. If you choose to obey the power of sin, it leads to death. If you choose to obey obedience, it leads to righteousness. Forgiveness is just the beginning of life in Christ. God wants us to live for Him now. 
And because of Jesus Christ, the gospel was preached. And you and I are blessed today because of Abraham. Did you know that? We're blessed. Experience Truth, 99.3 FM. If you sit in the back pew or the front pew, it's your voice we want to hear. The phone lines are open, so call 855-244-0077. Now, here's J. Michael McCoy. 38 minutes after the hour, coming up at the top here on the Truth Network, we have Salem Radio Network News and then Pastor Michael Mudloff hosting the show True Blue. I want to give you a programming note this Thursday, one of my favorite people in the whole world is going to be on this show, Matt Baird. If you've never met Matt, he is an amazing young man. I suppose he's 32, 35. Little guy. He can't be 100 pounds wet. And he has a powerful voice. His band is called Spoken, and it is an internationally known Christian band. And Matt makes his home here in Des Moines and just has one of the greatest stories. Have you ever seen Matt or met Matt and heard, heard him? No. Oh, just, I'll never forget. I'm sitting at Hope and it's the uh, it's the song with them. They take the collection. I don't remember what that's called. What's that called, Mr. Tattoo? The song they take the collection during? Right. Okay. Collection song. And uh, this little guy, okay, no hair, shaved. Black uh, but Buddy Holly glasses and tattoos, just like Father Tattoo, just all over. Comes out, sticks his mic up, strums his guitar, and starts to play. And I think, wow, that's a good voice. And then he hits it. He hits that chord, that that note, that that verbato, verbato, and it just, it was just killer, absolutely killer. And so I love this man. And uh, anyway, he'll be on here Thursday, uh, special guest here on the show. All right. You know, if you're sitting back listening to Recovery Monday with Joe Mites from St. Gregory and Bob Montserrat and, and Army Brad and Father Tattoo and something's just kind of, you know, just kind of knocking you in the back of the head, kind of making you think something maybe in your head. Maybe, maybe it's about you. Maybe it's about your brother. Maybe it's about your dad. Maybe it's about one of your kids. And you want to call up and ask a question? Phone lines are open, and you can be anonymous. Just call yourself Betty Bob. I don't care what gender you are, and you can be anonymous and ask the question. Because God is leading you to find answers. It's no accident you're listening to this show today. You understand how God works? You know. You know better than I do. He puts us in places, in places in seasons, next alongside other people who bring us what we need, and it's from God. We're just used as a vessel to give you the information you want, to pass on blessings from God. One word, two word, three words, a thought. And you might have to engage, you might have to sow some seeds to get the fruit. So ask. It's toll-free nationwide at one 855 Two four four double O double seven. Your voice is welcome here on the View from a Pew. All right, we've talked about uh, how alcohol absorbs into the body. We've talked about other toxins in the body and how it impacts the uh, intestine system, the kidneys, the uh, uh, liver. Uh, th- th- let's talk now about the brain uh, because we don't feel altered. Bob, I'll ask this as a question. We don't feel altered till it hits our brain? Yes, correct. Okay. So sitting in our stomach, nothing. Right. Going through the kidneys, nothing. Well. In the lungs, not much. Yeah, the thing is, though, once it gets into your system, it's not going to end up in your kidneys until it gets to your brain. And then then it's going to get out. It goes into your brain first. Well, generally, once you re- absorb it into your small intestines, like I said, the uh, oxygenated... Uh, blood has to get to your brain. So that's the first place where the pure blood has to get to. Or, and, and so if there's alcohol in there, the alcohol is going to get to your brain right away. Okay. So how does it impact the brain, Joe? Well, now we're talking about 
the real issue of addiction. You know, uh, the the liver, the the things that it can do to the organs and all of those. That's that's damage. Uh, the big issue when we talk about addiction and alcoholism is. How does that make you feel and perceive your life? And what it really is having the impact on and where most of this comes from is, is the neurotransmission issue. Essentially, the way that we experience life comes from our environment, and that also does have biological impacts. Okay. That's absolutely compounded when we're taking helpers into our system, like alcohol or any of the prescription medications. All of these things are basically playing with our neurotransmitters, the way that we physically feel. That's how we feel good, sad, bad, all of those things. Now, what we're doing, and this is really uh, to get back to your question earlier. Now, a problem drinker, what that's really coming from is, first of all, your perception on what that did for you. Also, your brain is recognizing that as a positive experience, a positive thing. And it will continue to recognize that. Now, there's, there's damage that occurs, and uh, there's, there's a lot of research that points to that being a repairable thing. But the reason I asked you when you'd smelled scotch on that gentleman's breath at the party is because typically what will happen, it's, that's, that's really what kind of forms a trigger. And a lot of times you'll, you'll walk into a, an environment and all of a sudden there's something about it, a smell or a sight or just some sort of experience that kind of conjures up an image and sometimes just a feeling of better things. And it, you kind of feel this pull towards something. Now, an alcoholic is going to obviously immediately recognize that as I want to drink a lot of times. Uh, your brain recognizes those triggers and stimuli as something that had in, impacted its neurotransmission. And that's something that makes me feel good. Now, the issue there is whether or not you have control over that. Now, that's really where we start to differ. Now, there's one camp that says, no, once this has been impacted, you physically have no control over what you do from that point. Once your body recognizes something is beneficial, you've trained it that way, there's no going back now. You mean once I smell the scotch? That's right. Okay. But you didn't do that. And that's really why St. Gregory's takes the point of view that it does, that no. Because um, we've retrained the brain. Well, we retrain the brain. But even if you have the most overwhelming an impulse to go and grab that glass of scotch, you still don't have to. I'm not aware of anything in that process that makes you pick up a glass right. and bend your elbow to your mouth. It's still the five inches between your ears. It's still the five inches between your ears. And that's either via perception or via the actual biological impact on the neurotransmitters. Okay, now tell me the truth here. Don't, don't sugarcoat it. I hate the smell of scotch, and I hate the taste of it. Mm -hmm. Do I get to take any victories from that? Be because uh, it, didn't, it made me go yuck. Yeah. I mean, it would have made me go yuck before. I mean, it wasn't gin. I, drink, I used to drink gin by the gallon load. Yeah, but we're talking about a different philosophy now. Okay. So, yes, if you want to... You can take victories on that uh, regarding uh, the notion that I'm a former alcoholic or, in your case, a recovering alcoholic, and that did not drive me to the bottle. That's terrific. No, it didn't. Um, didn't do anything. It's I would stinky. mostly uh, you know, take that as reinforcement that uh, I know what's best. I know what things I ought not do and chose to do the things I ought do. You know what it did? I just thought about this. The first thing I did was first of all I, I saw the I, I, I saw the the glass straight scotch no rocks no no mix then I smelled his breath then I thought yuck and then I this is terrible to say but then I looked at him and I thought oh I wonder if he's okay I wonder if he's one of me and he doesn't know it yet why is that bad to say well I because the way you present because I'm it, judging him I guess that's not judging no, you're you, wondering Okay. You were, but you. it sounded the way you presented it as from a loving place where you're like, oh, I wonder if he's okay. Yeah, I mean, as I, opposed to, oh, man, I'm better than him because I'm not doing No, that. no, no. I didn't think but, that at so, all. Oh, there was nothing like that. But I just know that in my life, in the, in the circles that I ran with, if a guy's standing there with a double shot of whatever it is, straight, no rocks, he's, he's, he's a heavy drinker. Sometimes. Some, only sometimes? Really? Yeah. Okay. Maybe lots of times. Okay. But uh, not all the time. 
Not all the time. Okay. Joe Mites from St. Gregory's is in the house. How does it affect the brain? And we want to hear from you, one 244 0077 if you want some advice or you've got a question we'd love to answer it for you right here on recovery monday on the view from a pew from st gregory's treatment center and ktia iowa from the remax real estate concept studios this is webcast one live Drug and alcohol addiction slowly steals a From the Remax Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. Drug and alcohol addiction slowly steals a person's identity, tearing away pieces of their life little by little until one day it seems like the hope of a happy future is gone and there's no chance of getting it back. Here at St. Gregory Retreat Centers, we can assure you that there is hope. Our unique approach to recovery begins with the understanding that the dysfunction and damage caused by addiction can be overcome, not just dealt with. Don't let another day go by. Call St. Gregory today. If you choose to obey the power of sin, it leads to death. If you choose to obey obedience, it leads to righteousness. Forgiveness is just the beginning of life in Christ. God wants us to live for Him now. And because of Jesus Christ, the gospel was preached, and you and I are blessed today because of Abraham. Did you know that? We're blessed. Experience Truth, 99.3 FM. If Tom Coates from Consumer Credit of America was your personal webmaster, Tom would filter out all bad debt emails. If Tom was your mailman, you'd never get any debt reduction junk mail. If Tom Coates was a lineman, he'd block any phone calls offering to reduce your credit card debt. Hi, I'm Tom Coates with Consumer Credit of America, and we're still your best choice for credit counseling. We're local, we're accountable, and we can do more. You make the call when the time's right for you. When it comes to competition, there really is none for Consumer Credit of America. the ones in the pew not pulpit come on now let's reason together the phone lines are open so call 855-244-0077 now here's j michael mccoy 10 before the top salem radio network news and then it's michael mudloff with uh true blue it's saint gregory monday recovery monday with joe mites bob monster at the cat in the hat Watching the chat, Army Brad and Father Tattoo. So the alcohol goes into the body, it gets into the bloodstream, it goes straight to the brain. Does it hit the right side of the brain or the left side of the brain or the back of the brain or the front of the brain or just the whole brain? That's a great question. (laughs) Whole brain, Bob says. It all goes, yeah. It just all goes. Alcohol will will seek out and get to every single cell of your body. Okay, so, all right, and alcohol does what? Different things to different people? Well, in, yeah, in general, it's a central nervous system depressant. Depressant. Then why do people get whooped up? Why do they get, why do they get more energetic? Why do they get louder? Why do they get... Well, that's an inhibition thing. That's, that's a little different. Okay, so... Or it could be that they're drinking a lot of coffee and have caffeine, so you have an alert drunk. And people, a lot of times, I mean, you have to be careful with the terminology of depressant. It doesn't mean just you're depressed then. Okay. It means that it's having an effect on, uh, you know, which neurotransmitters are really firing off there's excitatory and there's inhibitory uh depressant is it's it's slowing that structure down as opposed to making you a depressed person so. okay all right all right so i shouldn't get being depressed and a depressant those are not the same thing no okay all right no it takes what's normal and changes it okay and normally, like I said, if you're if you're a person that wouldn't do something, like for instance, if if you have, a, <laughs> I'm involved in a lot of crimes, and believe me, a lot of crimes involve alcohol. Yeah, because alcohol changes your behavior; it makes you do things in a sense that you normally wouldn't do. And I'm not talking about murder. It's just I'm just saying that you're gonna do you're gonna take steps that you. It's gonna make it easier for you to do something bad, and in domestic uh, disputes, alcohol is involved. In car crashes, when you think 18,000 people a year dying on the roads because of alcohol. I mean, alcohol is a cause of a lot of crimes, and that's why I have a job. Yeah, right. I'll never be put out of work for that. Right. 
When right. you say you're involved in a lot of crimes, though, you mean uh, other people's His crimes. His lawyer has advised right. him not <laughs> yes. to comment I mean, on that. Yeah. What are the worst crimes that you <laughs> have been involved with? <laughs> oh, I could tell you stories. But it's more of the investigative side of crime. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so alcohol is, uh, and, and now you look at the states that have legalized uh, recreational use of marijuana, well, those states are going to have to come up with per se levels now that you can't be you know, driving under the influence at a certain level within your blood and, and so forth and so on. So that those states are going to have to treat marijuana the same as alcohol, that if you're going to take it, you can't drive impaired. And so, uh, and, and you know, it's going to spread. If this continues the way it is, it's going to spread across the country, and then we're going to have to deal with another, uh, not, only, not only the alcohol, but we have all the prescription drugs, and then we have all the illegal drugs, and then we have, you know, the marijuana. It's just the difference, I suppose, is that there will be per se laws, and if a person's going to smoke and, dr and drive, just like they drink and drive, like, there's not going to be enough of us, you know, working for the state to deal with all of this. Joe, are, are we becoming a more toxic society? Yes. And I mean intoxicated society? Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Intoxicated and toxic. Why is that a good thing? It's not. It's not. It's a terrible thing. Then why do we let it happen? Because we are culturally unprepared for delayed gratification. Um, wow. He's got a good we, answer. Uh, and it's it's a we want to fix right now uh, for whatever ails us, and uh, we have a healthcare system that uh, is going to pump out fixes that you'll pay for. Is it going to be the same under the new health care act? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That, that's sure not going to help it at all. No, it's it's really not. I mean, uh, you know, I mean, uh, it, it it also really is. You know, it does come down, and this is one thing that that bothers me more than anything in the addiction field is we're getting away from this notion that, uh, you know, addiction in and of itself at bottom is a moral issue. Mm. It is a moral issue. Mm -hmm. There are, there's morality involved in the lifestyle that you lead. Um, I understand that you can fall into, uh, an addiction without purposefully going down that path, but it still doesn't take away the point. Uh, the more, and you can see this, uh, the more we walk away from the foundations of how we were created and, and, you know, the platform that we were given to live by, uh, the more toxic and intoxicated our society will be. Why, why, uh, why worry about it so much if there's no ultimate problem? Uh, if, if we're only here for as long as we're walking the earth... Who cares? Do what you want. See, the thing I don't understand, and this is more of a political conversation than a, than a, a recovery situation, but we, we, we make it so much easier for people to corrupt their morals when it comes to toxic, toxic, being drunk mm -hmm. or under the influence, but yet we continue to lower, raise the bar on the consequences of in the justice system. Mm -hmm. that, that doesn't make sense to me. That's because we're not operating off of a moral standard. We're operating off of a, a public opinion policy. We're operating off of political expediency, all of, all of those things. And those will always roller coaster if they don't come from a moral standpoint by which you, you really view everything to begin with. But the progressives don't think morally. Exactly. They think what makes you feel good. That's right. And, you know, I mean, that will happen. Our jobs as Christians is to try to spread the news. Uh, that's, it's, it's the Great Commission. It hasn't changed much. We just find different vices. Right. And uh, we'll, if it wasn't this one, it'd be a different one. Our commission's the same. Um, that's, that's the whole point of all of this. Yeah, if, 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 if you want to find a spiritually grounded person— Find someone who's gone through a St. Gregory's program because you automatically get in touch with how your creator created you to be. That's the goal, you know, but uh, that's that's going to happen with, you know, any truly morally grounded person. Um, you know, that, that means that they're operating off of a moral standard and defining what that standard is is the starting point. Uh, we believe that was given to us through our God. Uh, we believe that's on our hearts, and that's the standard by which we operate. If you, if you don't have that fundamental standard, and, and we believe that to be the true and most correct standard because we were created with it. That came from our God. Now, if you don't believe in that, uh, you've got a whole different problem. And it really does raise the question of 
well, who cares? And if you, if you don't have that, that standard given us by our creator, my answer would be, well, I guess I don't know. Uh, if, if that isn't true, who does care? What is the problem with it? What is the difference? Um, it's, it's, a, it's a different topic then. Now, after hearing that just now, if you know how you were created to be by your creator and you understand the morality of society and abuse and drunkenness, but you still find yourself in the throes of an addiction, you're okay. There's nothing wrong with you. God loves you. You're a sinner like anybody else. Reach out and ask for help. Call St. Gregory's. Call me. Talk to your pastor. Go to a Celebrate Recovery meeting, but reach out and get help. And more than anything, just pray.